Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Move this church forward through the speaking of your voice, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh, I feel the Lord in this place in a special way tonight. Can you just reach down in the depths of your soul and bless the Lord and give him your most sincere praise, most heartfelt devotion? God, we love you. you we love you we love you you're so awesome God you're so great you're so mighty hallelujah 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 I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I love you Jesus amen God bless you you may be seated what a joy and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord with you again tonight uh, we're thankful for this privilege and we appreciate this opportunity uh, to be entrusted with this moment and uh, we're grateful, grateful, so very grateful uh, for uh, being able to share this weekend with you. Um, as I stated before, we have such love and admiration uh, for the whole Booker family. And um, we are appreciative for the impact and the influence that they've had in our lives. And uh, I can truly say... Uh, Pastor Joel Booker and Bishop Larry Booker have been mightily used of God through the years uh, in preaching the Word of God and the will of God into my heart and into my soul. Brother, Brother Bishop Booker <laughs> has certainly been, and I don't say this lightly, a hero of mine. Uh, from my teen years when I first became acquainted with him and began to hear him preach I have been I have been just impacted through the years by message after message after message and uh, There's a great Russian brother in our church brother Valletta Every once in a while he'll look at me and say what level would you like to play? He and I were together one year in Mississippi when you preached that message. And I could just go on and list the names of messages that we've heard him preach through the years that has been so impacting. I remember hearing Brother Booker preach in Generette, Louisiana one time. He started his message and I thought, my goodness, he's starting where everybody else ends. This is going to be an incredible message. And... Um, as I think about Pastor Joel Booker and the ministry that God has given to him, uh, he is such a compliment to his father and undoubtedly a great gift to this church to continue the work on in Rialto. Sister Townley and I, the whole Townley family, love the Joel Booker family. Brother Booker, Sister Erica, and Peyton, and Trenton, and Avalyn, and Marilyn, we love them, and we respect them so very much, and uh, we just have a great and special relationship with this leading family, um, and uh, we sure miss them. We understand the issues surrounding COVID. Uh, it, is, it is just uh, amazing how this is affecting not just uh, families and churches, but our whole world is impacted by the continuing issues that surround the, the COVID uh, virus. And, uh, you know, while I'm talking about that, I would like to commend this church uh, because uh, since the beginning of the year, somewhere around February, March, uh, when our nation went into national quarantine and... Um, Churches were closed, businesses were closed, evangelists were uh, taken off of the road um, and weren't able to preach revivals as normal. Uh, 
there was a couple of men that approached me about being on a board and helping uh, give leadership to what we would call an evangelist fund. And uh, I want to I wanna say a great big God bless you to this church because being a part of that board, I am aware of the great contributions this church has made financially in helping evangelists this year. And I want to say God bless you. Through, through the leadership of your pastor and uh, your willingness to give, there has been many evangelists blessed. I wished I would have been able to, before I came out here, give you the final total, but it's somewhere around $65,000 that we have been able to bless evangelists with who have needed assistance. And your church has uh, been a part of that and a significant part of that. And Bishop Booker has been so kind to communicate with us and let us communicate with him and keep ourselves accountable. Uh, him and Pastor Kenny go there, and we appreciate it very much. We've helped between 35 and 40 evangelists during this season and this time. And you've been a significant part of that. God bless you. Also, I'm, I'm privy of late of the great blessing this church has been to the Gulf Coast area. The Hurricane Laura just hit our area. Thankfully, our town was spared a lot. We had a lot of damage in that we had trees down and power lines down, but it seemed like the trees fell the right way, and uh, we were just, just far enough away uh, that probably... 10 or 15 miles made a difference for us. And uh, we were spared, but the Lake Charles, Lacassine, De Quincey, De Ritter area, and on up to the northern portion of Louisiana was hit hard by Hurricane Laura. And this church has already been blessing pastors and churches and giving assistance and I talked to Pastor Joel Booker about this this afternoon and asked him if I could let this church know how much we appreciate everything that you have done for evangelists and for those that are suffering from Hurricane Laura. God bless you again. Your liberality and your kindness is greatly appreciated. God bless you greatly. Amen. I think you ought to give yourselves a great hand. And so we count ourselves blessed to be here. I, I want to go into the word of the Lord. I took my time this morning. I almost felt like I did you an injustice and I did me an injustice because I tried to put so much out this morning uh, that I didn't cover it as well as I would like to. Uh, but you were so patient. You were so receptive and you were so kind. And so God bless you for your love for the word of God and your respect for the work of God. And I just really felt like that I should just put all that out there this morning and just let God do whatever he could do with it. And I felt like I should come in tonight and just preach the word. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I, I, I felt like the Lord has, has helped me. I believe he's spoken some things specifically to me. Uh, so we will still in a way touch uh, on the idea of family, but I believe God's got a special work he wants to do in this place tonight. How many is ready for God to do a special work through the preaching of the word of God into your heart? Why don't you just stand joyously with me, raise your hands and say, God, speak to my heart. God, I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to receive the word of God into my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, pray with me for a little bit. I bless your name, Jesus. I bless your name. 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 I thank you, God, for what you're going to do through the preaching of the Word of God. I thank you for how you're going to help me communicate your will and how you're going to help your people to do your will. I praise you for it, Lord. I praise you for it. Oh, I love you, Jesus. 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 How great and awesome and mighty you are. 
I adore you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. Amen. I'd like for you to open your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30, and let's read a few verses of Scripture as a text. And uh, then we will turn to 1 Kings chapter 2 after you're seated and begin there. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 is where we begin. The Bible says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until there was no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. The Bible said that Ziklag had been smitten and burned with fire. When David came back to that city, he saw ashes, burning coals. And so tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach in the ashes of defeat burns a fire of revenge. In the ashes of defeat burns a fire of revenge. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I've really struggled today. I've wrestled in the spirit. I've wrestled more than I normally do. But I feel that there is a very significant work that God is going to do in this place. And there are some particular things God has spoke to my heart. And there's people going to receive help from God. And you're going to do damage to the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many is ready to do the work of God? To declare victory. And pursue everything that God has for you. Let's pray together one more time. God, I rejoice in your presence. I rejoice in the fact that you have a word fitly spoken for every moment, God. I thank you for how you give life through the power of your word. I thank you for how you give victory through the power of your word. I rejoice in how you take authority and exercise dominion. Through the power of your word. God, give strength to your people through your word tonight. Give Holy Ghost help tonight. Lead this congregation on. Lead God and every family forward. Lead every God leader of families and of this congregation with a special unction and anointing to greater victory. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, let's have church. 
Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. We'll read three verses of scripture here. The Bible says, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all of the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Notice this, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, There shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. David was going the way of all of the earth, nearing his final breaths. And as he was about to die, he charges his son, his successor, Solomon, to be strong. And to show himself a man. I wasn't aware for many years of really how young Solomon was when he assumed kingship. They say he was somewhere between 17 and 20 years old. I don't know. But he was very young when he assumed the place of king following his father. As a matter of fact, David said in one place that my son is young and tender. Solomon referred to himself even as a child, saying, you have put me in the headship of this kingdom, this group of people who are so great and mighty. And God, I need your wisdom. I need your help. I need your assistance to be able to fulfill the duty and the responsibility that is given to me to lead this great kingdom that has been placed in my hands. David the warrior, David the soldier, David the mighty one looked at his son from his deathbed, so to speak, and said, be strong and show thyself a man. Be bold and be courageous. And he said, keep the charge of the Lord. Walk in his ways. Keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimony. Keep it just like it was written in the law of Moses. Do it. Do the word. Live according to the law so that you may prosper in everything that you do. Wherever you go, if you'll walk according to the word of God, God will bless you and the Lord will be with you as he was with me. And God will cause you to prosper as he caused me to prosper. I want to remind us, while God has individual plans for every single person, God also has a greater and grander plan for families. He has a multi-generational plan for families. Just like when David wanted to build God a house, God said, you know what, I want your son to do that. But I tell you what, I'll build you a house. And if you don't mind, we'll just reference the bishop's message, the sure mercies of David, where God promised not just David to have mercy, but all of David's lineage 
to experience the mercy of God from generation to generation. And as a part of that continuing mercy from one generation to the next, the Lord said, I want you to know a part of that goodness is also that there will never fail to be a man to sit on the throne that would be fulfilled in the man Christ Jesus, Messiah. There was a connection between mercy and Messiah. And so, David knowing he had secured and had the word of prophecy spoken over his life of continued mercy and promised prosperity to all of his posterity and they that would be born of his lineage. He wanted it to be preserved. He wanted it to be kept and he charged his son, be strong. Show thyself a man. Live by the word of God that the Lord may continue his word. That he could cause his word to stand forever that he has spoken. Your life, Solomon, how you live it will be a foundation for God's word to be able to stand and continue. The prophecies that were spoken over us, they will continue I want you to be strong and show yourself a man because I want the Lord to continue his word from generation to generation. I'm just preaching this as a foundation right now to remind some of us that God has spoken things over our lives. There's word of prophecies that God has given to us as individuals. There's word of prophecies that have been spoken over our families There's words of prophecy that have been spoken over our ministries. There's words of prophecies that have been spoken over our assembly and our congregation. I want to charge us tonight, David charged Solomon, to be strong in the Lord. And let's be faithful to the word of God that the Lord may continue his word. David and in his own way was saying, hey Solomon, God has started something. Something great and powerful and wonderful has begun. It started with me. I'm first generation, but I'm not going to be the last. God's purposed it to be passed down to you and my grandchildren and then your grandchildren from generation to generation. He's saying, oh, let the word of God continue. Let God do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's a flow of of blessings uh, that has been begun by first generation Pentecostals in this place. Some of you, you're the first one in your family to ever believe in the oneness of God. You're the first one in your family to have been baptized in Jesus' name, been filled with the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost. There is no way that you can fully imagine of what lies in the fact that you have been born again. There's no way that I could properly convey to you the hope that has that is dwelt within the fact that God has called you into his kingdom and you've obeyed that call. There's hope in that calling that goes beyond just you. It's a great work that God has done in your life in making you a new creature and transforming your life. But I'm telling you, there's a work that God wants to do through you to your family, to your children, and to your grandchildren, to your great-grandchildren. To the second generation Pentecost, third generation Pentecost, fourth generation Pentecost, fifth generation Pentecost, sixth generation Pentecost in this place. Ever how many generations there are of those who have served the Lord. Let me charge you tonight. God has begun a work somewhere at some time in your family. And he has had eternal purpose uh, in uh, that salvation process. uh, In which he wants to do a mighty work through the family lineage. Do whatever you got to do that the word of the Lord may continue. That the Lord can bring to pass everything that he wants to bring to pass in your life and in your family. I'm just trying to tell you God's got such a great and grand plan and so mighty a plan. It's worth fighting for. 
It's worth pushing the plate back far. It's worth consecrating far. It's worth sacrificing far. I pray that everybody in this building could say, God, you're up to something. God, you have begun something that I'm committed to you finishing through my life. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of personal weaknesses that's going to try to keep you from getting where you're supposed to go. There's a lot of demons in hell that's going to try to keep you from experiencing the fulfillment of the prophecies that God has spoken over your life. There's a lot of works of darkness uh, that are conspiring and scheming uh, to limit you from being able to experience the fullness of God's purpose in your life. You're going to have to be determined. You're going to have to make up your mind. You're going to have to set it as a goal. You're going to have to see it and say, I am not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be distracted. But I am going to let the Lord continue his word. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's greater revival for this southern area of California than you've ever experienced before. The Lord hasn't done his greatest work. This area hasn't seen its best days. There's young people with the hand of God on your life. There's mom and dads. You're not preachers, but you're raising preachers. There's preachers still not born. There's missionaries still in the womb of parents in this place. There's young people that's not even married that's hearing me preach tonight that God is already destined for him to bring forth from your loins laborers and servants in the kingdom of God. Be committed to letting the Lord continue his work. Don't allow a personal failure. Don't let rejection. Don't let mockery. Don't let scoffing. Don't let what you're not right now determine what you think you will become. Because with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. You know what you need to learn how to say? I'm unstoppable because with God, all things are possible. I'm going to be effective in the kingdom. I'm going to pray effectually in the kingdom. I'm going to be a worshiper in the kingdom. I'm going to be a soul winner in the kingdom. I'm going to be used of God. I'm going to make a difference in my world in the kingdom of God. Let's just worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you what I felt like the Lord let me feel today. And what the Holy Ghost let me sense today. I know I felt it this morning, but, but I couldn't put my hand on it. And as I prayed and I sought the Lord this afternoon, he, he put me on the mark. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Ghost does. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I pray the Holy Ghost to help me to say everything that needs to be said. But I feel some intimidating spirits around here. I feel some intimidating spirits that's trying to cause people to just back up. Let up. Give in to fear. It may be because of your own personal failures. It may be because you didn't come from the right family. It may be because you didn't have money while you're growing up. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, God has brought you into the kingdom to make a difference and to shake hell. From the front to the back, side to side, God has brought every one of you into the kingdom for such a time as this. He's here to use you with power, with anointing, and with authority to raise families and rescue families from a lost and dying world. 
and hell and humanity will do everything they can do to keep it from happening. You got to have your heart fixed, your mind made up, your destiny set. It's got to be alive in your soul. There's demons saying, hey, the task ahead for you is too daunting. The word daunting means discouraging through fear. And so there's... There's things that are intimidating. There's things that you're being discouraged about. Fear. You're unsure. You're unsettled. This is where it started for me today. In the spirit, I could hear the silent screams of brokenness. The preacher preaches about family on Sunday morning and you have no idea what a real family is all about. Brokenness has a way of screaming out. There's too many pieces. We'll never get it all together. I can hear the moaning and the groaning of pain and sorrow that's enveloped souls in this place. It's like I could, I could sense the overwhelming pain that you've experienced in life that just wants to suck you under like a maelstrom. I could feel the frustration that comes from a lack of knowledge, and spiritual understanding. That says, I don't know how to do it, God. Can I tell you, you don't really have to know how to do it to do it. You just got to be willing and try. And be willing to take some instruction when God gives it to you. Sometimes, sometimes we, we say when children are born, I wish the manual would have came with it. But can I tell you, Emmanuel has come. There's a lot of examples in the Bible of good families, bad families, parents that did it right, parents that did it wrong, children that made the right decisions, children that made the wrong decision. I'm just trying to tell you, if we'll get into this book and we'll read and study, if we'll listen to preaching and we'll be willing to apply the principles, God will help us to do what we never thought we could do. God can help us to do what hell said we would never do. I'm just here to let God take authority through the power of his word tonight over these intimidating, overwhelming, discouraging, fearful thoughts and realities. Let's worship the Lord together. I'm here to remind you, grace is always greater than sin. Where sin did abound, what? Grace did, grace did, grace did. Much more abound. I'm just trying to remind you there's more for you than what's against you. There's more for you than that which is against you. God is for you. God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? You don't have to know it all and understand it all. All you got to do is know God. God will teach you. God will help you. God will assist you. God, when he has a plan, he'll get you there. Just stay in his hands. That's what I like about David. That's what I like about David. He said, I, I've got enemies 
they would daily swallow me up. He fighting daily would swallow me up. They'd be many that war against me. But he said, this I know. Psalms 56. This I know. God is for me. And that, that just says it doesn't matter what is against you or who is against you. If God's for you, you win. If God's for you, you'll try on. I'm going to tell you, as human beings, we have amazing potential within us. It's amazing what human beings can do. Like the Bible said, the people in the early days of humanity, they were going to build a tower to Babel. And in building the tower to Babel, they were like, we're going to build this tower. We'll never have to worry about a flood destroying us and separating us and dividing us. And they purposed to build that tower, and the Bible lets us know plainly they would have succeeded. They would have done it. God puts amazing ability in human beings. But what happened? The Lord said, "Uh uh-uh. Not going to let this happen. And he divided them by causing a division in their languages. They all spoke the same language, but then all of a sudden, they begin to talk differently. And as a result, they begin to scatter across the world. God wasn't in it, and God wasn't for it. What I'm trying to tell you, anything's possible with your life if God's for you. If you got his favor, if you got his hand on you, if you got his blessings, you can set out to do your own thing and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen and I'm going to do amazing, world-changing things. No, you won't if God isn't for you. But if God's for you and it's his will, you're going to do it. And I'm just trying to tell you, I don't understand it all, but I just know I felt in the Holy Ghost that there's people that's got amazing power and amazing potential and great futures in this place. There's good parents in this place. Your families have more hope than you realize because your shortcomings and your failures and your past is screaming at you. We've messed up. We've never got it together. How in the world are we ever going to get it together? How are we ever going to raise kids that's going to ever be anything and do anything for God? I'm trying to tell you, all that matters is God is for you. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. The righteous man falls seven times. What is he going to do? Get back up. We're not going to give up. Give in. When we're looking at the ashes of defeat, we're not just going to get overwhelmed with sorrow. When we look at the damage that the devil has done, what the Amalekites have done, to zigzag, so to speak, we're not just going to sit back in despair. We may weep our tears. And we may feel discouragement. But we're not going to weep always. And we're not going to let discouragement be our end. But when we look at the ashes of defeat like David saw in the city of Ziklag, he wept his tears. He was distressed. What are we going to do? How are we going to get out of this? How are we going to get beyond it? How are we going to get everything back? I tell you where you start. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, I'm in a tough time right now. It's hard right now. The battle's hot. The enemy's gained some ground. He's taken my wives. He's taken my son. He's taken my daughters. He's burned my house. The city's just in ashes. Don't just sit there and say, all right, I quit. I give up. I give in. No. Let something start stirring inside of you. 
Say, God started something in my life. God started something in my family. I've been anointed. I've been chosen. I've been appointed. God hasn't destined me to die. Amen. A death where I'm stoned by the men that have trusted in me. God has anointed me to be king. And God has anointed me to have dominion and exercise authority and power. I'm telling you, young people, rise up in boldness and take this city. Every young person in this place, it doesn't matter whether your mom and dad are here anymore or not. Purpose in your heart. I'm not going to let anything against me keep me from being everything I can be in God. I wonder if some young people can shout with me right now. Shout with your voice. Dance with your feet. Run an aisle. Do something for God. We got a new generation coming on that says we're not ashamed. We're not intimidated. We're willing to be bold and courageous and let God continue his work. If you're a young person in this place and your mom and dad's not being what they should be, maybe they've walked out on God when you need them the most. Something ought to stir up inside you tonight and say, hell, you're not getting me. God started something and I'm not backing up. Matter of fact, I'm not giving up on my mom. I'm not giving up on my dad. But that's sure not going to affect the reality that God's got a plan and purpose for my life. I will be what he's called me to be. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, I'm going to never give up. I'll never give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to let up. I'm not going to start missing church. I'm not going to start skipping prayer meeting. I'm going to stay engaged with the youth group. I'm going to do the work of God. I'm going to let God continue his word. Come on, I feel something for young people right now. Come on, young people. Let God strengthen your resolve. Let God strengthen your determination. Let God fix your heart. Let him settle your mind. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going on with Jesus. If it's right and appropriate and you got a burden, reach over to a young person. Lay your hand on them. Pray for them. Say, God, help us to see your word continue. Lay your hand on them. Hell, we're not backing up. We're going to fight for every one of our sons. Fight for every one of our daughters. To be and to become what God has destined them to become. Oh, come on, move in the Holy Ghost. Move in the Holy Ghost. Move in the Holy Ghost. Come on, young person, be strong. Show yourself a man. Show yourself a lady. Be strong and fervent for the Lord. I feel 
I break it. I feel dominion. I feel authority. I feel power. say go 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 David go young person pray mama pray daddy pray grandparent young person move in the Holy Ghost let the Holy Ghost anoint you to retake some things in the spirit let the Holy Ghost anoint you tonight to, to move by his power oh groan in the spirit groan in the spirit let healing and power work I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. All time prayer, all time worship, all time singing. on your son. Come on, mama, lay your hand on your daughter's shoulder. Come on, young person, find an elder. Say, lay your hand on me. I want what you have. I want it. I want God to continue his way. That's it. That's it. Come on, let there be a generational transfer in the Holy Ghost. Let there be a generational transfer in the Holy Ghost. Lay your hand on them. Lay your hand on them. That's it. I'm not going to be timid. God started something good. I'm going to be bold about it. God is starting something great. I'm going to stand strong and fight for it.
throne, the Holy Ghost is saying you can have it all back. You can have it all back. Everything, everything, everything. Come on, God's doing it. God's doing it. God's doing it. He's breaking spiritual barriers. He's tearing down strongholds. He's releasing his will into the hearts of young people. 